welcome to today's online service. My name is Stacey and I get the awesome privilege of being a part of the team here at Elevation Tweed. And if this is your first time tuning in, I just want to say a very special welcome to you. It is so good to have you with us and I hope you enjoy today's service. Again, a special welcome to our family and friends down in Elevation Yamba as well as Elevation Tweed. It's great to have you guys along today as well. As we continue to give into this place, God is doing a lot around us. He is blessing the community and blessing what is taking place within our church family. So I encourage you, continue to give, continue to sow in faithfully to what God is doing here. So there are two ways for you to give and those ways are gonna be on the screen below me. We're about to go into a time of worship. I'm gonna hand it over to my good friend, Syme, who's gonna open up the worship space for us this morning. And then after worship, we're gonna be entering into the Word. So I encourage you, open your heart up to what God is doing in today's service, and we hope you enjoy it. Hey, welcome to Church Online. We're gonna join together in worship. Father, we just thank you. We invite you just to invade us with your presence in these moments. Thank 
giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am And you crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated By the power of your name I'm seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all.
Hey everyone, great to be with you again. We are talking about the book of Romans. That's what we're looking at as a church over the next number of weeks. And uh, super excited because I have the Tweed teaching team with me again, Stacey and Steve. And if you didn't listen to last week's message talking about the book of Romans, we were looking at an overview, but ultimately uh, this new direction of where we're heading as a church is that as a body of believers, we will move through a book of the Bible together so that all of us know that we've got something to contribute. We go, we are reading uh, these same scriptures together and then we're coming together on a Sunday and we're listening to this message and discussing how this scripture is applying and changing and transforming our lives. So I'm super excited to be with Stacy and with Steve again today and we're going to dig into Romans chapter 1 and Romans chapter 2. So awesome. I'm excited. Yeah, so are we. Can't, yeah, I'm just absolutely. so happy to be here. But I think even as we're talking initially and off camera a little bit about this new direction, uh, I just felt like it must be such a relief for you that you're not having to come up with all these brand new revelations every week yeah. to wow everybody. Yeah. But instead, we're pointing people to Scripture. And so speak a little bit to that. What's the That's new good. direction for the messages? I know we touched on it last week, but just catching everyone up to speed. What is that new direction? Yeah, well... In, in our home gatherings, I've been seeing so much growth happen in people's lives. And I know in the one that I'm involved in, I said to the guys one week, hey, let's read this one chapter of scripture, but you read it before and we'll come together and talk about it. And seeing the excitement in everyone uh, really was one of those moments for me as a Christian, as a pastor, where I'm like, oh yeah, everyone's got the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is our guide and our comforter, yeah. but our teacher. And he, he leads us into all truth. He leads us to Christ. And so I just believe this is the new season that God is moving mm. His church into worldwide. And it's a vision that I've had and I've shared it a number of times, this vision. Um, ultimately, this vision was a bomb coming out of the sky, hitting the earth, this big mushroom cloud went up and the mushroom cloud represented the man or the woman of God that mm. everyone came to listen to. But the vision reversed and then a second bomb came out and exploded and this mist went out over the whole earth. Yeah. And I just remember saying, God, what is that? And he said, that is going to be the last move of my spirit on the earth is wow. where I raise up every man, woman and child who is my follower. And I, I mature them so that they can take this gospel to the world. Wow. And so I just really believe in this season, this is where God's moving us is to, hey, I'm not, I'm not the hero mm. as a yeah, pastor. That's great. I'm here to see the body mature. And that's what I'm excited for is yeah. every single person digging into this and that's going, cool. here's what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. And this is key for maturity, isn't it? That, that we don't come to you wanting a revelation from God, but we can yep. go to God himself. We can go to this ourselves. Yep. And instead of being spoon fed by you, yep. we can actually grab our own knife and fork and dive in. <laughs> like good. who would have thought? <laughs> so so I think even evangelism can be, my job is to get people to church yep. to listen to a message. Yeah. Whereas what you just said, that yep. vision you had is, is my job is actually to go out into all the world and preach the yep. gospel. Yeah, so I've, I think I've heard that so many times. Yeah. Like people in our church yeah. in this season who are getting revelation from God saying, I actually understand that I've got a responsibility mm. now as a Christian, whereas yeah. before it was just if I bring my friends to yeah. the church service, then Locke can take care of yeah. the rest. Yeah, <laughs> And I'm like, no, God's lifting the water level of maturity yeah. for all That's so awesome. Mm. Christianity is becoming so personally, like we're so having to be personally responsible for mm. our own walks with Christ during this COVID season. Mm. And part of that is scripture, diving yeah, into it for ourselves. Yeah. Hey, we could talk all day about <laughs> this, but let's get to the book of Romans. Let's hone in on the task at hand, and that is to walk through uh, this this letter that, that Paul's written to the church in Rome. So Steve, why don't you fill everybody in? What did we talk about last week? And where are we going this week? Okay, so just to, again to set the scene, this was a letter that uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, a church that he hadn't planted, he hadn't been to, he desired to get to there, but he, he wanted to write them a letter um, to deal mainly with an issue with Jews and Gentiles coming together. But yeah. The Holy Spirit, I think, had in mind for him to systematically spell out the gospel. Yeah, and so great. this letter is now very relevant to us, as all the Bible is, but particularly this letter because it really is uh, the the best. A lot of people have called Romans the best picture of the gospel that there is, the, mm. good, the good news of what Jesus did for us. So um, it's, it's a wonderful book. I think it's one we need to keep on coming back mm. to. Yeah, that's great. It really does unpack for us the depths of the gospel. Mm. So it's not just surface level word that mm. we say and we sing about, 
but as Christians to truly understand the depths of what God has accomplished for us in sending his son. It's so important that we dive into Romans because it's helping us do that. It's helping us understand that. So let's look at chapters one and two today. Just some small chapters. Yeah, small chapters. (laughs) Paul's starting this letter and he opens, he says, you know, I'm I'm sent from God. I'm an an apostle. And then he gets straight to the the chase, doesn't he? He just doesn't hold back. So chapters one and two, what does he open this letter with? Well, I love that he opens the letter with this is the good news about Jesus. So yeah. he points to Jesus <laughs> and he's kind of like, hey, Jesus is the hero here yeah. of this whole thing. Yeah. Um, but the big topic he just goes straight to is God's <laughs> anger at sin. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just, just like. Just rips that band-aid yeah, straight yeah, off, not he? No, like I think a lot of times in the modern day church, we kind of, we want to pretty up Jesus. Mm. I heard Jeremiah Johnson say it. He's a prophet in America. And he said, oftentimes when trying to put makeup on Jesus to make him presentable to the world. Wow. And it's like, oh, I don't want Jesus to look offensive or mm. I don't want Jesus to be presented in a bad way. And um, oh, you said a great quote, Charles Spurgeon. What was it? Open the word of God. Oh, yeah. So, so Charles Spurgeon, preacher from a few hundred years yeah. ago, um, he says, the word of God is like a lion. You don't have to defend it. You just got to open the cage and let it loose. Yeah. And so I love that. And even as you're talking about printing up Jesus, I'm thinking so often we talk about, you know, God's love and God's forgiveness yeah. and mm. the grace of God and the future we have. But but there's a backstory to that. There's mm. Jesus was the crux of the story. He's the pinnacle of it. But there's a, a whole other story that's taken place, which yeah. is what Paul kind of establishes mm. in chapters 1 and 2. And that is this thing called sin. Yeah. That when God created the world, He created it perfect. But then we see that something went horribly wrong. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And it's this thing called sin, which is the reason why Jesus had to come. Yeah. So I think as we're looking at Romans, we've got to understand the story doesn't start with Jesus. Yeah. The story starts with God creating the world through the Word, who is Jesus. Mm. Uh, but the cross is the middle. It's the pinnacle mm. of the yeah. story. Mm. So, Steve, why don't you unpack that for us? What's the start of the Christian story? And what is Paul getting at in chapters 1 and 2? Well, I think last week we talked a lot about the gospel and what it means, the good news. But the, the dilemma that we have is that Many people don't think they need that good news because yeah. I'm okay, you know, I'm, I'm a good person, you know, I know there's evil in the world, but I, yeah. I pretty much do more good things. And right. so the good news doesn't mean anything to them. They need to know what the bad news is first. Yeah, yes. The gospel Steve. only that's makes good. sense when you hear the bad news so first. True. And that's what Paul's doing straight away. He's saying, we've got a problem here. Mm. And there's a real dilemma because we know that God is a God of love. He loves us dearly. It's part of his nature. He is love, Mm. but he also hates sin and he can't stand sin. So how can he love us when we are sinners? Mm. And that's that's the dilemma that Paul is about to unpack here. And as you said, he just gets straight into it and basically says, no one is without excuse if you if you can't see that God is your creator and that he wants to have a relationship mm. with him. It, it's us to make the choice to mm. turn away and to suppress what we know in our heart is to be true. Right. We, so so what is sin? Maybe you can unpack that yeah. for us. Sin, what is sin and where did it come sin, from? Sin means to miss the mark. Yeah. So God is a holy, perfect God. Uh, he's, you know, he's flawless. He's He is without failure or fault. Yeah. And he creates humanity in the very beginning, Genesis and uh, chapter 1 and 2 talks about it creates humanity to be in relationship with him. So being a perfect holy God, he cannot be in the presence of sin. He cannot be faced with sin. Mm. And so he creates humanity to be in this relationship, but he gives humanity a choice. Yeah. And he says, hey, you've got this whole garden in the Garden of Eden. You can have everything, every tree, every fruit um, is yours, except for this one tree. And he puts a choice yeah. in the garden and he says, this is the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. I, I don't want you to touch it. Have mm. everything else. And the reason why he puts a choice there is you've got to have a choice to love. That's great. Otherwise, yeah. he'd create us to be robots. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we'd just, you know, have no concept yeah. other than to obey God. But you can only love when you choose That's so good. to obey and choose yeah. to be in relationship. And so God creates humanity with a choice. Wow. And the devil comes, who ultimately Satan, Lucifer is the fallen angel, was leading worship in heaven, Mm. pride rises up in his heart where he's like, I want to be like God. Mm. I want to receive this glory. God in his holy perfection can't be faced with sin. So he casts Satan and the Bible says one third of the angels are cast out of heaven. 
And um, there, Lucifer, Satan, tempts Adam and Eve into the same sin that he fell into, which is pride, where he says, hey, if you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God. You'll know everything. Mm. And uh, sin gets a hold of humanity and they say, that sounds pretty awesome. Mm. That sounds great to know everything and be like God. And so they take of the fruit and from that moment is where sin enters humanity. Yeah. And so it and it and from there it's not hard to see that it, everything was broken. Uh, if you read Genesis, it just breaks down straight away. So mm. sin ultimately is missing the mark of God's holy standard and therefore breaks and fractures us as humanity, but fractures the world. Yeah. And sin is so powerfully destructive. And fractures our relationship with God as yeah. well. Fractures all of creation's relationship with the Creator, mm. which means that we're no longer connected to God in that way. The world's, you know, in, in, and we see it in, in all the disasters and disease yeah. and all these things that we know shouldn't have happened and shouldn't be happening, yeah. but it's because of this thing called sin. So yeah. Adam and Eve fell, they, they, sin happened, and it's almost like a disease that now enters humanity that no one's exempt from. Yeah. Right, we're all infected. Totally. So talk about that. Why is it that what Adam did is now put on us? Like, what's the deal? Like, how has that happened? Well, I think a lot of people have thought that. How can that be fair that because Adam sinned, yeah. now, like, I've inherited that, you know, so I'm actually born with a sin nature. Mm. And you can see that because you put two young children together and they'll fight over something. There's a, that selfishness that comes out. We've got to teach them how to be good. We don't need to teach mm. them that stuff. It's, it's inherent in us. So how can that be fair? But the truth of the matter is, is that if we were put to the same test, would we have, like, they only had to do one, obey one command, don't yeah. eat of the fruit. We're born into this world. If we were born without sin and we had to, were put to that test, do we really think that we would pass that test? <laughs> mm. So we blame it on that. It's actually we... better for us that sin <laughs> came through one man because wow. the Bible says that um, the second Adam, Jesus, life came through, through Jesus. So mm. now we don't have to be faced with, I've got to live a sinless life because we couldn't do it. Yeah. We've just got to put our trust in Jesus That's who good. did live a sinless life. Mm. So it's better for us that, that it came through one man because uh, righteousness comes through one man as well. Yeah. Mm. Steve, you're skipping ahead. <laughs> but you've got to bring it back a little bit. So just so everyone's following along, big picture, Adam and Eve sin in the Garden of Eden. And yep. this is the story of Christianity. Mm. So we need to not say, oh, I just believe in the cross. I've got a childlike faith. It's like, no, you're missing the whole story. This, mm -hmm. the, the story of Christianity is God created this world perfectly. Sin enters humanity mm -hmm. through their disobedience. And then now we're all infected. And as you said, we inherit a sinful mm -hmm. nature. Yeah. It's who we are. Mm -hmm. It is our identity. Yeah. It's not what we do. It's not behavior. It's who we are at the core of our being. If you cut me open, I'm going to bleed sin and disobedience and selfishness, yeah. right? And so... In that, what does that look like in our lives? How can we convince people who, like you said, they're living morally, they think I'm living by the Ten Commandments. How can we convince them? Like what does sin look like for, for everybody at its most basic um, expression? Ultimately, I think it's idolatry. Mm. It, idolatry means I put my love and my affection and my trust in something other than God. And I right. would say that's what sin ends up looking like in its most purest form. And if we're honest, if every single human being is honest with themselves, mm. you will look and say, yes, I can see where I've put my trust in something. Like for me, mm. I became a Christian at 19 years of age. And before that, I was searching. I was searching in relationships, um, in, you know, partying. I was searching in trying to, you know, surfing and trying to fulfill my life with fun. But every single time I was empty mm. um, because sin ultimately makes you empty. But you will try and find your fulfillment and your satisfaction in those, in, in the things of the world. And that's why we see so many people running to things like relationships or careers mm. or because they're trying to find satisfaction. But you cannot satisfy your soul with anything other than Christ, with anything other than mm. God. But sin ultimately makes you feel like I can find it somewhere else. <laughs> I can, uh, oh, that the, take of the fruit and you'll be like, God, I can find it somewhere else other mm. than God. Oh, I'll have that. Oh, you can have it in this career. Oh, I'll mm. try that. And we run so fast down these pathways of trying to be satisfied. And that's idolatry. Ultimately, yeah. that's, I think, how sin is most represented in our lives. 
and, and Paul says it here. I mean, you must have been reading Romans 1 because yes. Paul says uh, that, <laughs> that we exchange the truth about God. This is um, chapter 1, verse 25, that we exchange the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve the creature mm. rather than the creator mm. who is blessed forever. And I think that's what Paul's getting at. It's idolatry is at the at the core of us as sinful beings that we remove the creator from our direction of worship. You know, yep. we're all worshiping something. So we remove the creator and we put a created thing in his place. Yeah. And we now begin to worship that and get significance <clears throat> from that and yep. fulfillment in our life from that, whether it's a relationship, success, yeah. body image, mm. a sport, a, a hobby. Yeah. I mean, affluence, whatever, you name it. We're mm. all worshipping some sort of created thing and God is saying that's what's wrong with the yeah, world. Yeah. That's I, how it's gone horribly wrong. And I think back when Paul wrote this, um, obviously when you look at history, a lot of people were worshipping other gods that were made like a carved image and, and he talks about that. But in this day and age, even the worship of ourselves, of yes. humanity, humanism is a big replacing yeah. God so with, with ourselves. And so we worship ourselves. I'm in control of my own life, mm. you know, I'm the one who's responsible wow. to make sure this planet keeps going. You know, mm. God's not in control, I'm in control. So I think that idolatry can even come back on ourselves. So good. Yeah, we bow down and we start worshipping ourselves yeah. Yeah. and our our resources, our time, our energy, our effort goes towards ourselves yeah. as the God of our lives. Yeah. What a so tragic true. thing. Mm. So true. Um, so as we're talking about this, <clears throat> the, the issue is sin, the big problem is sin. Why is that such a big problem in God's mind? I mean, surely he knew this was going to happen. So why is it that we're in such a state that required such a sacrifice as Jesus? Yeah. But before we get to Jesus, why is it such a problem that sin is at the very core of our being? Because God can't be faced with sin. Like God so desires to be in relationship with us. That's why he created humanity. But because he's holy and perfect, he can't be in relationship with sin. And so I think... That's the issue is the disconnect of humanity to God. Mm. And we're sitting there saying, well, like <clears throat> God's saying, no, you don't understand how much I love you and how much I want to be in relationship with you. But because of this sin, there is now a, a disconnect. Mm. And so I think the ultimate issue, issue there is that humanity will forever be broken until they're connected back to God. So mm. that's, what, that's what I personally yeah. see. Yeah. And I think just to skip ahead and maybe to next week, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned yeah. and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. Yeah. So that's what sin is. It's missing the mark, but it's falling short of the glory of God. So the glory of God is pure, perfect, holy. And so that's why, that's why sin is such an issue. Because for us to have the relationship with God that he created us for, sin can't be involved. Mm. And mm. so that's the, the issue is that, you know, no matter how good a person you think you are, you think of the most holy, mm. best person you've ever met, they're still falling way short of God's yeah. glory. Yeah. And that's the problem. And I realise that as people, and obviously I'm wired in a way as an evangelist to be talking to a lot of people about Jesus, and this is the big issue, mm. is the topic of sin. Mm. And as soon as I say we've sinned and fallen short, I can sense almost a resistance yeah. from people because I know I was like that. Before I was a Christian, people were saying, you've sinned. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Like, How dare you tell yeah. me I'm, I'm in the wrong? And that's ultimately what this is saying is like, we've sinned. Yeah. We're in the wrong mm. as humanity. And even as Paul says, he uses the language that we're all, none, none of us have an excuse. Mm. And he says in um, verse 19 of chapter 1, for what can be known about God is plain to them. Because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Mm. So what Paul's getting at here in chapter one is we all have not only this this subconscious level of something's wrong, not only with the world, but with me, mm. but also we see, we look around at the mountains and the valley and the waves and the rivers and all these beautiful birds and flowers. And, and we see a testimony of God. It's yeah. almost like God's like, I'm here. Yeah. Like yeah. you're ignoring me, but I'm here. Yeah. And so that's why he says all of humanity is without excuse. Yeah. You just have to walk outside and see there is a God. Yeah. yeah. And so I think when it comes to sin, that's the whole point. It's in us, but we can't blame God and say, well, you didn't tell me. Yeah. It's like, no, God gave you this world yes. and, and it's screaming out that so there true. is a God. Yeah. Not only is there a God, but something's gone wrong. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest problems and questions people have is, well, what about people who've never heard of Jesus? Mm. And so that answers that question. 
because he talks about that God is clearly seen in creation and later on he talks about he's also in our conscience. So yeah. externally he has his creation and our conscience. And so if, if we live up to the light that we've been given, you know, most people that have heard about Jesus, they, they, mm. they know that someone came and died for them. And, but those who even haven't even heard about Jesus, if, if they can um, see the creation and their own conscience and follow that, well, God will judge them based on whatever measure of light that they've received. So yeah. it answers that question. No one is without excuse. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. So you said God's judgment <clears throat> just there, Steve. Yes. I'm going to oh, just no. unpack that Dripping a little the bit. Band-aid. Get ready, everybody. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> so sin, we've, we've established what that is and how it's affected all of us. But sin requires judgment. Mm. And we can look at it from terms and law, right? Like we have um, committed an offence towards yeah. the Creator And that offense has a penalty attached to it, right? So now we are all in debt to God. If you're thinking legal terms, right, we've offended this God and there's a debt to pay. What has God done? So obviously we're guilty. What has God done to clear that guilt in order to, as you said, reconcile Mm. through in a relationship humanity back to himself? There has to be a debt that's cleared. So what's God's provision in order to clear that debt? What What are the options? His provision is Jesus. Right. And, <laughs> and the alternative? Is eternal separation. Right. So, um, yeah, so obviously we've we've sinned, we've fallen short, and we've broken his law, and we've got a debt to pay. And so this is the good news, and this is how Paul starts out this whole letter. This is the good news about his son, Jesus Christ, mm. our saviour. And so he sends Jesus to pay the debt of our sin. Um but there, there has to be a debt paid. And that's what is so pressing for us right now as humanity mm. who are living in sin and don't have the debt paid is we've got to understand that there is judgment and, and God poured out his judgment on Jesus on the cross. So when Jesus, yeah. the Son of God, went to the cross, that was our sacrifice for, for our sin and that was the ransom to be paid for our sin was the son of God, which is so crazy. (laughs) Like, and this is why I just can't ever really get my head around it. Cause I'm like, I don't under fully comprehend here your love for us, God, that you would come in human form, your own creation, and you would die for us. To pay this, the debt that we owe to you. Yeah. It's just like, it's crazy. Um, and but this is the most serious part of understanding the gospel is Mm. if we don't accept that payment. He's like, it's fully paid. All yeah. you have to do is now accept that it's paid and come into relationship with me and your sins will be forgiven. But if you don't accept it, you need to understand Jesus is coming back again. So there is a time in history, which I believe we're getting closer and closer to. Obviously, mm. you look at the state of the world where Jesus will return for his church, those believers who have accepted that gift of salvation, that eternal relationship with him. But we've got to understand he came first time as saviour, but he comes second time as the judge. Mm. And so he will come and judge those who are still living in sin. And so it's so serious. But Jesus is God's answer yeah. for our issue of sin. Yeah. And, and talking about judgment, we've, we've got two choices. We can either stand before Jesus and be judged for our own sins. And if that's the case, we're in a lot of trouble. Mm. Or we can accept that he took our sins mm. and so he's already been judged so we can't mm. be judged again mm. for those things that have already been judged. So you have the choice. Which one do you want to take? Yeah, and even the thought of God judging people, we I wrestle with that, right, mm. like God judging. But we've got to keep it in mind that justice is in our nature yeah. because it's who God is yeah. and as we're made in his image, it's part of who we are. Yeah. So when somebody commits a crime out there, they, they hit another car, they're drunk driving, we want justice mm. Mm. and we have that in ourselves. We demand justice. Mm. Think about what's happening in the world with Black Lives Matter and that whole conversation. We're demanding justice for mm. an injustice yeah. in the world. And so it's in us. It's in who we are. Yeah. And yet to... Project back on God and say, well, you shouldn't want just. Yeah. It's yeah. not an, a valid argument. Yeah. We want Which justice. Which again reveals our sin nature. It does. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Because why we're at, yeah. we're at the center of our own worship. Mm. Yeah. And so to, to project on God something that, that we're not even willing to do ourselves, bend and flex in regards to the law and what we see as justice, yeah. I mean, makes no sense. So, of course, a just God is going to have judgment upon 
is laws that are broken yeah. and, and people being selfish and hurting one another. There's got to be justice for that. Yeah. And he's provided justice through Jesus' sacrifice. Mm, yeah. His greatest possession is one and only son. He has provided in Jesus the answer to yeah. this big problem of sin. It's such an amazing story. It is, and yeah. It's it's so simple. For some people, it seems too simple. You know, all I've got to do is believe in what Jesus did. But that's how much God loves us. Yeah. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He loves us so much that mm. he's provided a way yeah. that is not difficult. It's simple enough that a child can understand it. And Paul says it really well in, you know, judge, the judgment of sin is found in Romans chapter 2. But Paul says here in Romans chapter 2 verse 4, he says, Don't you see how wonderfully kind and tolerant and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing yeah. to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you wow. from your sin? Mm. And if I look back on my journey and still even after coming to Christ where I I know how good he is and yet I'll still turn at times and yeah. look at something else and try and cling on to something else to satisfy me, the kindness of God leads me to turn from mm. my sin, mm. leads me to repentance. And repentance ultimately means to turn mm. from where you're heading. I can bust out of my chair right now. I love this stuff. Like this, the Bible just makes my heart come alive. And I think that's what we're talking about. We want people to really eat of it themselves so they can have the same reaction in their heart. When I I hear you say, it's the kindness of God Mm. that leads me to repentance. Whoa, like it's unbelievable. I love this thing. This, the Bible is awesome. We're running out of time. I could talk all (laughs) day. Uh, But I do want to close with a quote, which I think sums up chapters one and two really well. And it's from Eugene Peterson, who writes um, his own paraphrase of the Bible. And he says twice in those two chapters, he says... the Message Bible. Sorry, yes, the Message Bible. Yep. He says, um, God is kind, but he is not soft. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's what we've got to understand about the judgment of God and what he's done for us in Christ. God is so kind. He is kindness, but he is not soft. Mm. Yeah. He is a just God, a God who is going to stick to what he says he's going to do. And yeah. that means um, making judgments on law, and, on, mm. on sin, sorry, um, and what, what's happened in the world and what's happened in us. Mm. Yeah. So the answer and the solution is, is Jesus. So yeah, I think the big part we need to understand for us as believers is this does put an urgency for us on the mission. Yeah. And, you know, oftentimes I can say, hey, just tell someone Jesus loves them. But to tell someone Jesus loves them is to tell them the full gospel. Yeah. Yeah. And the judgment for sin has to be included in that. Yeah. We have to let people know, as well as we have to understand, we have sinned, we have fallen short, but there's a there's an answer for it. Mm. His name's Jesus. But if we don't accept Jesus, there is judgment that is coming. Like it's really, really mm. serious. Mm. It is. And that's yeah. what this is talking about. Mm. So I'm gonna pray. <laughs> And you're going to close out today. Otherwise, we'll be here for hours. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for just this conversation today as we get to peel back the layers of your beautiful, intrinsic story that you've written for us in the gospel. God, that as we go back and have a look at creation and how you've created this world perfectly, we're just in awe of you as a God who would desire a relationship with humanity. And then as we look at sin, God, may we look inwardly at our own hearts and and see through the testimony of Scripture, God, that we too are broken and that we are in great need of saving. And then as we look at your son, Jesus, may we be in complete awe and admiration for what you have accomplished for us on the cross. Uh, So continue to give us wisdom and guidance as we look at the book of Romans. Continue to enlighten our minds and our thoughts and may our hearts come alive with the truth that is in Scripture. So we love you. We thank you for this conversation today. May your scriptures and your words just burn in our hearts, God, that we would come alive through the testimony of your Bible. So we love you. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, if, <clears throat> if that is resonating with you today and uh, there is something that you feel like, man, I didn't understand that, that I've sinned and that I've fallen short, And I even know there's a lot of people in churches who have sat in church services for a long time who, you know, have come to a collision moment where they're like, man, I've even been sitting in church and not understanding that I I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's what Romans is focusing on here in the first couple of chapters is that we're all in the same boat. We need a saviour. And the best news of the gospel is we have a saviour and his name is Jesus. And so if you're listening today and you do not have that personal relationship with Him, if you are still in your sin, please understand me, friend, this is the most serious decision and the best decision you can ever make is to understand that there is going to be judgment on sin. 
but the best news is is that there is a savior and his name is Jesus Christ and he died in your place for your sin and for my sin and now all we have to do is believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we believe in him in our heart that he died on the cross and we confess with our mouth that God the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead and the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 when we do that we will be saved and so if that's you today and you want to make this decision to follow Jesus I, I just with everything in me my greatest prayer would be that you would just say between you and God right now Jesus I give you my life I give you my life thank you for dying for my sin fill me with your spirit I want to be a child of God and if that's you today and you are praying that prayer you're having that conversation uh, we just want to say we're so excited we'd love to connect with you and talk to you more about walking this journey as a follower of Jesus being a Christian but we're so excited. I pray for all of us right now in our home gatherings that we continue this conversation. Uh, it can sometimes be tricky to talk about sin and the judgment of God, but we've got the scriptures to go to, so have a look at it and uh, let's have an amazing conversation and have an amazing week and we will see you next week.